In this Photoshop design tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to design a simple vintage styled logo in Photoshop. So hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and in today's tutorial I'm going to teach you guys how to design this super simple vintage styled logo here in Photoshop. It's super simple, anyone can do it and it will not take too long. Okay, so before I start I just want to say also a little sorry here for being away for a month. I've been preparing some stuff and busy with some other stuff for you guys. So next year I will reveal everything and I hope you guys will be amazed by what we've done and created for you guys. All will be revealed very very soon. Okay, so let's also get right away into the tutorial. As you guys can see here on the right hand side, I've already got the design and the background folders ready. So we started out again just with the background. I've added just that and on top of that just the design. Now let's also break this down quickly. It was first of all just again a normal white layer. Then I've dragged in a certain background that I'm going to show you guys right now. So this is what the background looks like. I've also got this again from graphicstock.com. But stay tuned on this channel. There's a little Christmas package waiting around the 24th, 25th for you guys. So yeah, don't miss out on that. Okay, this was the background that I've used. And then again, I've also added here some colors. I've blurred this a little bit and changed it a little bit. So over here, you guys can see, changed here the... Uh, hue and saturation adjustment layer a little bit. Yeah, and basically just change the colors, which we're going to do in a little moment. Okay, and then on top of that, obviously just two, three font layers again and with some shapes, just created this super simple logo. Now, let's start right away here just with the background. I actually want to turn everything off and show it to you guys quickly. So we don't need to run through this everything step by step. So basically this was the background and this little area here I've merged that out or just cropped it and like really scaled it up and this is basically the background as you guys can see over here and that's already blurred a bit. So you can either go to filters and add a bit more Gaussian blur here. Filters blur, Gaussian blur, I didn't really add too much blur. It had already good, some good blur in there. Then next step that I did was basically go to hue and adjustment layers here at the top, hue and saturation. There we go under our adjustment tab and just added here a few adjustments. So I started out with the hue and played a little bit around. Went to rent like minus, I don't know. I played a little bit with red and green colors and really enjoyed this setting here, minus 36. So and that was nice really, but um, it lacked still a little bit of that saturation. So it needed to be a little bit more stronger. So then I just pushed up this color scheme a little bit here up to 35. No, actually, sorry, 30, 53. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, a little bit more aggressive, but that looks really, really nice. So yeah, changed that a little bit. Now I've also changed again. Let me just switch over here. So that's what the background looks like. And now you can even blur it even more if you want because this gets a little bit pixelated here. But yeah, for a small tutorial like mine now for the thumbnail and for the tutorial purposes, I left it like this. Otherwise, I would still blur this a little bit or maybe make a complete new merge all layers together. So you create a new layer from it and then you blur it again. Anyways, so this was my process. Here it is again. And then that was my background. Then let's start right away out with creating new guidelines. So I'm going to go to view, new guides, and I'm going to say here 50% from the top for horizontal as I do usually. And again, view, new guide again, and also vertically. Also, if you are completely new to all of this design stuff and so, have a look on the channel. I've created a few more videos on how to create the canvas size and get into this Photoshop process if you don't know how to start with it. Okay, so let's also start with the design now right away. First of all, I'm gonna to go to my text tool on the left hand side here. I'm gonna make a nice big selection. And first of all, I'm gonna write my name or the main slogan, so which is vintage now. And basically what I want to do is first of all, change the font. So again, for that today, we're gonna to work with something completely else. It's called Riot something. Let me just find it over here, Riot Squat. Um, squad. You guys can also find that in the description down below. I've linked everything for you guys again. Okay, so link that. And first of all, let's go over to the character box over here on the right hand side. And I'm going to change the tracking here to zero. Then I want to go to my sizes here and just make this a bit bigger. 
maybe something around 50. Let's have a look, 57, 56. Well, that is a bit big, but let's go for 57. Okay, and I'm gonna choose a different tracking for this. So maybe let's take the font a little bit further together, like a minus 40, which I'm trying to put over here. Yeah, there we go, minus 40. Okay, and I'm gonna accept that so it's nice and close together. Okay, take your move tool. I'm gonna position that somewhere here into the center. And I noticed something now. <laughs> it's actually in capital letters. So I should write this obviously not in capital letters. Vintage, there we go. Great, now it looks a bit better. Okay, let's move that a bit into the center again. And you guys can also see that the font is nice and close together. Okay. Next step that I want to do is again, either you can work now with shapes again, also have a look on the t channel. There's some more tutorials on how to create your own custom um, shapes. Or if you want, you can do the same process like me now. I'm gonna take the pen tool and just freestyle and create like a big, huge arrow. So basically I'm just gonna start out, put an anchor point, another anchor point and another one. And then I'm just gonna put an anchor point over here somewhere, make a little bit of a curve in there. Okay, so we have a round arrow. Then I'm gonna hold Alt now while I'm still in the pen mode and just gonna move this side all the way around till here so that this path goes again backwards to this side. And now, whoops, that was a step too quick. Let's go back to history. Now what I'm gonna do is basically click on the last anchor point to complete the path, but also I'm stretching this a little bit so you guys can see the top part also makes a little bit of a rounder path there. Okay, drop it and right away you guys can see here is the path. Let's maybe remove this so you guys can also see a bit better. I'm actually gonna turn the background on again. It looks a bit more creative. All right, so first step, you can also now just create a shape out of this or again, you can just n normally fill it up and you keep it like that. What I do normally is press right click and say here, define custom shape. And then I can also write here arrow or whatever. I've done that before, so I'm not gonna do it again. I'm gonna actually hit cancel. And once I've got this arrow now, I'm gonna go to my shape library over here, custom shape tool library. I'm also gonna go into the library all the way down. You guys can see here it is. This was the last one that I've just created now. If you hit okay, it will be the same with you. Double tap on here. I'm gonna hold shift now so it's equally expanding. And now I'm just gonna drag this all the way out. Something like this. It's obviously a bit more different and I'm doing stuff quicker than before. So it will look a bit different, the logo, than the first one that I showed you. But anyways, now you guys can see here's our shape. It looks completely different. This is because here in the top options, you still need to change a few certain things. Like stroke, for instance, switch this back to transparent. And the first one, fill it up with pure white or whatever color you have on your font here. Okay, you can hit enter, whatever. I'm gonna select it and move this up a bit. I'm also, what I'm gonna do now is press Command T. I'm working with the Mac, so for all the Windows users, please press Control when I say Command. So Command T, that will put you in the transform mode. Hold Shift again if you want to, and I'm just rotating this a bit. The reason for that is so that I can have the G here a little bit nicer in my arrow. Okay, let's move that over a bit. And obviously, let's move that a bit back, yeah. Something like that. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna press Command, Shift, and H to hide these outlines here. I'm also gonna go back to View and just say Clear Guides because now I've already got my center somehow set. So I'm happy with that. Now when I'm looking at this, I'm maybe gonna take the shape and just move it over a little bit with my cursors, a little bit to the left. And I'm gonna hit right click here and rasterize this layer. Okay, so it's not a smart object anymore. Our shape down here. So we can now cut out things out of this shape or out of this layer. I'm gonna go over to the marking tool and the elliptical marking tool. Let's also with Z zoom in a little bit first and let's select again the marking tool. And I'm literally just going to make a rough selection here somewhere around the G, moving that away a little bit and hit delete. But remember you have to have the shape three layer selected. Okay, and I'm still gonna do another selection here maybe a little bit rounder this time. Okay, and remember this might look a little bit different than the previous design. Okay, press Command D, get out of the selection, and you guys can see now we've cut out this little piece a little bit more. Okay, it looks a little bit different than the first one. If we're gonna have a quick look here, I've cut out a little bit more than previously, but you guys get the point. Play a little bit with this when you do it. 
Okay, next step again, press T on the keyboard to get into the text tool. I'm going to make a selection here and write style. Okay, so I've written it ready. You can't see it because it's too big. A lot of people do this mistake. So what you should do is press Command A. Again, Windows user, press Control A. Now you've selected the whole font and you can literally just take the size button here and move the size down a little bit. So I'm going to go with like 11 or so and also first of all change the font again. This time I'm working with intro again. You guys can also find that in the description down below. Okay, select everything, style, I'm going to go back to the character box and first of all change my tracking to zero and let's push the tracking now all the way up. So maybe something like yeah, 1800, 900. Let's have a look here. 880, 860. Okay, I'm going to accept it. And I'm going to play later still a little bit with just the style here. Move it somewhere into the center. And now for the last step that I'm still going to do, zoom out a little bit, I'm going to make a circle around the complete logo. So again, I'm going to create a new empty layer here. And now I'm going to go over to my shape library again, the custom shape library. Open my main library again and I'm going to select just a pure round circle over here. Now bear in mind again that if you don't have all of these shapes and round things, again on the channel are a few tutorials teaching you how to do your own custom shapes or stick around till Christmas and you will receive a cool package from me. Okay, I'm going to double click on this, hold shift, make a nice big selection here and it might be a little bit too big, let's have a look. Yeah, it's a little bit too big, I would say. I'm going to press Command T, so I don't need to do the whole process again. I'm just transforming it a bit. Accept it again, and obviously I'm doing it a bit quicker. Okay, as you guys can see, we have again some stroke options here again from our shapes. So let's go back to the shape. And first of all, stroke, none, and pure white. Great, I'm going to hide the outlines. Command Shift H, so I can see this a bit better. And I'm also going to move this a little bit still into the center, kind of going with my gut feeling here. Okay, again in the layers palette, I'm going to hit right leg, rasterize the layer. Now I'm going to go back to the marking tool, rectangular marking tool this time. And I'm just going to make a nice big selection here. And we want to get rid of these two lines here, cut those out. I'm going to hit delete. And there we go. Command D, get out of the selection. And you guys can see round here and round at the top. So if you want to still move it, take the move tool and move this around, shape it a little bit, transform until you are happy with this. Great. So again, I'm going to take vintage here, shape three, style and shape four. Command G, put everything together in a group. Hit design here again. And that's it. Let's maybe move that to the top so I can show you the difference. This was the bef what we've done now. And this is the before. Again, before and after, before and after. So again, a little bit different than we had before. But anyways, turned out almost the same. If you want to, you can take now this complete group, press Command T again, have it transform, hold Shift, just remember that, so it's equally expanding, and you can now make it smaller, bigger, whatever you like to do with it. So yeah, that's basically it for this tutorial, guys. If you enjoyed this content, please hit me up with a big thumbs up there. Share it with all your buddies who are new to Photoshop and don't forget to subscribe. And once again, hang around between Christmas. We've got a cool special for you. So yeah, thanks again, guys, for watching and I'll catch you all in the next tutorial. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.